Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, should I learn Ruby after, I, after I've learned Node? So let's get into it. Well, this is, so, uh, we've been here before where somebody asks, oh, I know th this thing here, should I learn this thing here? And sometimes this makes a lot of sense, but I think that uh, I would be very curious to ans ask these, uh, ask people, and I've tried, I haven't gotten a reply for, all, for this yet. I'm very curious to know why the, 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 the idea is that, all right, so you learn one thing, so like you learn one programming language, such as, say, Node, and then the immediate thing that you think about, you haven't even learned Node at this point. The, first thought even before you start is what you're going to learn after you have learned node that's the thing that i find interesting because the thing is guys i've never really met a i i've never met an athlete or like someone like that who said i'm gonna be really good at football and then after I've learned how to play football, I'm going to be a really good ja javelin thrower. It's, it's a very similar mindset. I mean, the thing is that if the first thing you pick, like the first programming language, isn't it like a kind of a good idea to not make any assumption on, assumptions on that just yet? Because that in of itself is most likely going to take quite a long time. Unless what you're talking about is literally learning the basics, the absolute bare bone basics, and then you kind of sort of know it a little bit. And you should, I, I love talking to those people. It's kind of, it's kind of funny because some people like, yeah, um, when there are no stakes, they will say that, hey, I, I know this stuff. And then when you put them in a situation where they have to prove that they know this stuff, they go from, oh, I know this, to they kind of, sort of, they are familiar, they dabble in it. And you see the, this, uh, if you want to be a professional, guys, that's not good enough. Nobody's going to hire you if you have dabbled a little bit, unless you have a strong foundation in whatever it is that you claim that you know how to do. So in, to get to the point along with this question, I would say that it doesn't really make sense. I mean, Node.js today is, it's a fairly popular concept and JavaScript in general is a lot more, com a lot more popular than Ruby is. It's not that Ruby doesn't have any relevancy, but it's a very, it's a bit of a strange thing. I mean, there is, of course, the exception that if you have, say, Ruby as one of the most common la languages in your region where you want to work, and it has a lot of relevancy, then yeah, it make, may make quite a, you know, quite a bit of sense to learn it if that's what people are asking for in your city or your region or so forth. And that is probably the only time I would consider saying that, yeah, that's probably a good, you know, it's a probably a good thing to learn because the thing about Ruby is that there isn't a whole lot, lot of value in learning Ruby if you learn Node. Now, I've said in the past that I think that that's a different story depending on the language because the thing is that when you're learning multiple languages, you are going to get be benefits to a certain degree, you will learn different ways of doing things. But some languages are better complements to, to the languages you already know than others. So for Node, as an example, like with Node and doing that sort of development, you will get a foundation of some sort. The thing that Node and learning JavaScript is going to lack is the enterprise mindset and the enterprise culture. So you will learn how to write software in, the, in that language and you will be able to produce applications, but it's unlikely that you will learn the sort of things that are very relevant to learn if you want to build really, really large systems. That's something that you find a lot more in Java and C Sharp and so forth. But you don't, it's not as common in Ruby. It's the sort of the same limitation. It's the same thing with PHP. There's not really an ecosystem of knowledge and a culture around large scale enterprise development in these languages. So basically, I would say that Ruby, uh, learning the Ruby after Node.js is, it's not all that much valuable. If you had said, 
say, learn Java after Node.js or learn C Sharp after Node.js, that would have been a much be like a better, a better complement to Node. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're thinking about what to start after Node.js or after any language for that matter, the thing that you should think about is, okay, what language will give me a complementary skill set to the thing that I'm already using? Because if you're picking another language right after the one that you're studying now that is very similar and has a very as solving the same sort of problems and doesn't really bring you much more in terms of a more well-rounded portfolio of knowledge maybe there's a better thing out there with the exception once again if your region is really like demanding that skill set then it makes a lot of sense for career purposes have a great day